Hello everybody. So I'm going to be discussing local DNS attack. Uh, to start off, we're going to talk about the setup. So from first off, you're going to need to download the zip file from Seed Labs, which contains the Seed Ubuntu 32-bit. Once you download that, if you uh, if you don't already have VirtualBox, then go ahead and download it. Follow the instructions for installation. Um, after that, you can go ahead and click New, so you can create a, a virtual machine. Uh, for the first one, you're gonna name it Server. Make sure it's the type Linux, and the version of Ubuntu is 32-bit, because Seed Labs only provides that type of zip file and image. Uh, for the memory, you're gonna want to use 2048 or 30. 72 megabytes for the memory size because the recommended uh, isn't enough to sustain the virtual machine. As for the hard disk, uh, make sure you use uh, the existing virtual hard disk file, which is in the zip file. So when you download the zip, you unzip it and it'll be the first one in the folder. Once created, uh, go to the settings for the virtual machine go to the general and set the shared clipboard and drag and drop to bi-directional and then go to uh, go to the virtual box uh, file click preferences and then you're going to find yourself at uh, go ahead and click network there you're going to add a new nat network because this is going to make sure that all the server the user and the attacker which will create will be on the same local network, but they'll have different IP addresses. Okay. So in order to create the other two, you're gonna clone the virtual machine of server. So for this one, uh, you can, you're gonna change the name to user. Um, when it, on the bottom, it's gonna have Mac address policy make sure you change it to generate new MAC address for all network adapters in order to have a, a unique IP address from the server. If not, they'll be the same and it will work properly throughout the lab. Uh, after you do that, so you're gonna click next on the clone type, you make sure you click full clone. And then you're gonna repeat it again for attacker. Uh, some Just some useful information that you're gonna need throughout the lab. Uh, for the user seed, the password is seed backwards, so T-E-E-S. Uh, for the user root, the password is seed Ubuntu, all lowercase. If you can't find it, uh, you can also follow the references at the end of the PowerPoint. So before you continue on, you need to find the IP address of each virtual machine. So in order to do that, you do ifconfig, and on the bottom, it will show the inet address, which is the IP address for the virtual mach machine itself. So for our user, it's 10.0.2.15 for the sake of my uh, walkthrough. The attacker is 10.0.2.5 and the server is 10.0.2.4. All right, we're going to get started in the lab. So for task one, First, you're going to go ahead and type the code, sudo get it, and you're going to go ahead and make sure you get into the text edit. It'll pop up on its own after you type the type this command on the terminal. On the terminal, it may ask you for your password for seed or for root. Just make sure you type in the password and it'll give you permission to go and it'll open up. Once there, make sure you add name server and you put the IP address of the server itself in order to well, specify that it is the server. After you type in the server, the name server and the IP address, make sure you save the changes. And then after that, you can go ahead and go back to terminal. To cancel it, you do control C, and then, it'll, then you're gonna go ahead and run the command. So in order to do that, you're going to type in sudo resolve conf dash u. This will cause the change that you put to take effect. And in order to make sure that the server is set up properly, you can just do dig 
and whichever website you prefer. I went ahead with Google and as you can see, it will say server 10.0.2.4. So there, that means it's set up properly. Uh, for task two, for task two, uh, the first two steps are automatically already done and Bind9 has already been installed on C the Ubuntu. For Bind9, it's already specified in the lab paperwork itself. As for step one and step two, when I did the walkthrough, I found them already completed prior. So, but if they're not already completed, go ahead and do set a sudo get it and then follow this line. And then you're gonna enter the following under options. So under options, you're gonna do dump dash file and then the quotations and everything in it. And then you're gonna exit back out after you save. And then you're gonna do sudo rndc dump db dash cache. And then you're gonna do sudo rndc flush. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and go back into the, the options. And in the options, just make sure you put dnssec-enable, no. And then after that, you're gonna wanna do sudo service by nine restart in order to reboot and have the effects change. And after that, you can go ahead and ping uh, any website. I went ahead with Google again. And it, sh it should ping everything correctly. After that, we move on to task three. So for task three, what you're gonna do first off, you're gonna be creating zones. So step one, go ahead and follow this first bullet point. It'll open up this t the text file, as you can see here. And then you're gonna add these two zones. So you're gonna add example.com and uh, 0.168.192.in-addr.arpa and you're going to include everything inside the brackets as well. After that, save it and then you go back to terminal control C to exit and you move on to the next step. From there, you're going to go ahead and follow this line of code on terminal. And this is going to ask you to type out the zone for example.com. So the reason you're typing it out is because it will contain the records for the zone. So you're going to type it out word for word as given in the lab instructions. I have the screenshot also includes all the what is needed to be entered. Step three, we'll be repeating it, but except you're gonna be creating a 192.168.0.db, and then you're gonna type what's in the screenshot. Afterwards, you're gonna go ahead and go with dig, and you're gonna do example.com, and it should output everything properly. So on the output, it should display display the answer section, authority section, additional section, which will show the correct IP address of example.com. On to ta task four. On task four, you're gonna move into the attacker virtual machine. There, you're gonna start off with SSH and you're gonna paste the IP address of the user of VM right after that on the command line. And then it's gonna, in, when prompted for the user root password, make sure you type in C Ubuntu, put all lowercase, and then you'll be given access. Afterwards, you're gonna do get it, as you see in hosts, and it'll show you all the local host document that it contains, and you're gonna add www.bank32.com as mentioned, specified in the lab, and you can change the IP address to any of the, anything. What I used was the google.com IP address, And then after that, uh, do not, uh, if you use dig, uh, dig will not show the IP address changed, but if you ping it, 
it will show the IP address from which you placed. For task five, you will be typing out this command. So this will allow you to listen in on any DNS query that's coming from the host. On the lab instructions, it does contain like uh, what each dash and letter means. So for the dash lowercase h is the host name, the dash uppercase h is the host name IP, etc. And then afterwards, you already it will, this will allow you to move on to the next step, which is actually task six. So for task six, you're gonna change add the dash f with source host IP address and the dash t which is the time to live. Afterwards, you're gonna go ahead and dump the cache and you'll be dumping the, uh, the, not the uh, you're gonna do uh, pseudo CAT of the cache, that way you can view it and it will display, it will display the spoof reply. For task seven, you're gonna go ahead and copy the attack.py from the guideline section. This is a Python uh, code. Uh, if you copy and paste it, you need to retype the single quotes and you will need to make sure that you indent it properly. If you type it, you can either copy and paste it or you can type it out. Uh, either way, it should work fine. Afterwards, you're gonna run the Python code. To run it, you're gonna type sudo python attack.py and it will run it. From there, you're gonna go back to the user and you do dig www.example.net and you're gonna just do control C to end on the Python code. Afterwards, so that way you can see what it caught. On task eight, all you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the Python code add the additional entry right here, we'll put google.com, and it specifies it in the left section what it wants. So it wants google.com, uh, same to total time to live, 259200, in, and S, and it wants to go to attacker32.com. Uh, you already, in the original code, it already gave you two examples, so you're just gonna copy it for a third. But when you launch it, the attack on your local DNS, make sure that you do not attack the google.com, you attack the example.net. And then from there, you're gonna go on to task nine, which you'll be adding on to sections as well. So you're gonna add the facebook.com as an example, and you're not you're really gonna be attacking it. So, from there, once it out, you're gonna run the attack again. And then after that, that is it for the lab. So the reason you're doing that is because you're poisoning the cache of the user. And it is local, so that makes a difference. Since the local network means that they're on the same IP address, same subnet mask, and the next step from this one is actually the remote DNS attack. And if you look at the lab on page 10, the guideline for the Python code is there. And it specifies what each of them mean, like the ID's transaction ID. But that is it for the video. If you need any more references, I included the, the virtual machine manual the virtual box manual and the DNS local PDF for the lab itself. That way it helps you guide in installing, it helps you out in duplicating the virtual machine as well as following the lab itself. Thank you.